The Adventures of Pinocchio. There once was a toy maker named Geppetto. He had no wife, no children, and no family. He was alone. One day, Geppetto found a talking piece of wood. He wanted a son so much he carved a marionette out of the wood. He named him Pinocchio. Pinocchio talked and talked and talked. He loved to talk. When the puppet ran out of things to say, he made them up. He even lied. He lied about accidentally stepping on a talking cricket, and he lied about stealing Geppetto's money to see a show. He lied about skipping school, and he lied about getting caught by a policeman. And every time he lied, his nose grew. It would grow longer and longer and longer with each lie. Geppetto told Pinocchio over and over, "Never lie." But every time the puppet could, he did. One day, Pinocchio ran away to see the world, without even saying goodbye. But the world was a dangerous place. Pinocchio met a fox and a cat who stole the puppet's food. They hung Pinocchio from a tree, and four Undertaker rabbits came to bury the puppet. But a white blackbird came and saved him, and told him that Geppetto was in trouble. The old man, sad, went looking for Pinocchio, and when he looked everywhere on land, he took a boat to sea. And he was swallowed by the terrible dogfish, a monstrous shark so big it looked like an island. Getting a lift from a friendly dolphin, Pinocchio searched for Geppetto, and was swallowed by the terrible dogfish himself. Inside, Pinocchio found Geppetto living in a boat inside the shark. How would they escape? Pinocchio would lie. He lied and lied and lied. He lied so much his nose grew fifty feet long, and he poked a hole in the dogfish, and they escaped. Back at home, Pinocchio promised to never lie again. And that night, while he slept, a fairy came and turned him into a real boy. And he and Geppetto lived happily ever after, <laughs> even if Pinocchio still didn't like school much. Aladdin and the Magic Lamp. Aladdin was a poor boy from a poor village. He lived only with his mother in a poor shack. But Aladdin dreamed of doing great things one day, and buy his mother a nice house. A sorcerer from Maghreb came to the village, pretending to be a rich merchant in need of an apprentice. He chose Aladdin from all other boys. Aladdin was proud and promised his mother he would work hard. But the sorcerer really needed Aladdin to fetch a magic lamp from a booby-trapped magic cave. The sorcerer could not do it, for anyone who tried had died. So he tricked Aladdin to go down into the darkness of the cave, deep in the belly of the earth. Were crystal wonders in stone, and blind fish in icy waters. A million bats lined the cave roof, and skeletons of those who had died lay on the ground. Aladdin noticed a ring just beyond the outstretched hand of one of the skeletons, and he picked it up and put it on. But he came for a lamp, so he continued looking. And there, a lamp sat on a pedestal of stone. Aladdin reached for the lamp, but as he did, he heard a scraping sound, and he leaped backwards, just as a huge stone block fell from above. Because of his quick wit, he just must be killed. He grabbed the lamp and ran back to the entrance of the cave. But when he handed the lamp up and asked for help getting out, 
the sorcerer locked and pushed a stone over the entrance, trapping Aladdin. Aladdin knew he was doomed and rubbed his hands together in despair. But he also rubbed the ring and whoosh! From the ring, a jinn appeared. I him from the cave. Then he spotted the sorcerer and commanded the jinn to freeze him like a statue. But the lamp the sorcerer held did not freeze, for it was a magic lamp. With his magic ring and his magic lamp, Aladdin flew back to his home. He commanded the jinn of the ring for riches and the jinn of the lamp for a palace. And then he and his mother lived happily ever after. Until the day Princess Badrul Bado, the Emperor's daughter, was kidnapped by the evil Wazir. And Aladdin took his ring and his lamp, rescued her. But that is a story for another day. The Little Mermaid One quiet day, deep, deep inside the big blue ocean, a little mermaid woke up with a big smile on her face. It was her 15th birthday and that was a big deal, for she was to swim out to the surface for the very first time. She rushed up and took her first deep breath of air. She saw the sun and the boats and one very handsome human. But all of a sudden, the waves grew bigger and tipped his boat over. Oh no! screamed the little mermaid as she swam towards him. She dragged him onto the shore and quickly swam back underwater. But she wished she could stay, for she had just fallen in love. She thought of him all the time and had to see him again. So the next day, she swam straight to the sea witch's door. Can you give me legs? She begged as the sea witch laughed. She handed her a potion, but not before telling her the price. You give me your voice and your mermaid soul, she said. But worry not, you'll get a human one as soon as you marry your one true love. It sounded so dangerous, but the little mermaid didn't care. She drank up the potion, and the very next morning, she woke up on land with legs. She slowly started walking and soon learned to dance. The humans saw wow. her beautiful dancing and came to her right away. As they danced, he told her he was in love with the girl who saved his life. She wanted to scream, that was me, but she couldn't without a voice. She lost her loved one and her soul. She sat by the sea and cried. A sea snail swam by and told her, however, that there was still time. Kill the human and you'll get your soul back, it whispered. But the little mermaid knew she wasn't going to kill anyone. Your heart might be broken, but it's still good, the snail went on. You can become a spirit of air's daughter if you'd want. What could she do? She agreed, and she was lifted to the skies. She watched over her loved one and kept him safe, and that made her smile. <laughs> 